We're coming in hot to give you our hot takes on all the latest mental health news. From headlines and memes to developments and breakthroughs. We go into this show blind with the hopes of learning something new. Before sharing some bunny hugs. And leaving with our eyes wide open. I'm Nick. And I'm Todd. And this is Mental Health Headline Hot Takes. We're glad you're here. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Mental Health Headline Hot Takes. I'm Nick. I'm this Todd. Is Todd. And I, I introduce him sometimes, and sometimes you, I let you introduce yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. No, All that's right. okay. Well, spin, spin the wheel, make the deal. And Nick goes first. Oh, my God. Have we ever had that? I don't think we've ever had that. I, I'm not sure. By the way, I, did you hit record? Yes, you I did. did. Record. Okay. <laughs> I always one hit time record. We were, what do you mean? <laughs> For the audience, I don't remember. Did we tell them? One time we recorded two whole episodes and never hit record. Or no, it was one episode. No, it yeah. was two. It was two, wasn't it? I think it was both. We just kept talking. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But we made it through. We did. We did. So my article today is in People Magazine, discovered from People's Instagram account. And this is a bit of a follow-up on a topic we've discussed before. But um, the reason that I wanted to bring it up again is because I actually have gone from indifferent to having a take. So I figured, not indifferent, but undecided and, you know, the nuance of it all. Um, but now this stupid website is putting an ad in front of the headline, so I can't read it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so uh, here's the headline. It's in People Magazine by Ingrid Vasquez, and it was published on April the 5th. And this is a woman who's 28, opts for euthanasia rather than living with mental illness. And she says, I'm a little afraid of dying, but she's going to be dying on the couch in her living year, living year, in her living room. At 28 years old, her name is Zoraya Terbeek, who lives in the Netherlands. And this interview was published back on May 1st, or I'm sorry, back on April 1st. Man, my dates, my times, who knows what's going on with me today. (laughs) Um, She's expecting to be euthanized in early May. And her reasoning at 28 years old, and there's a, this is a multi-layered hot take I have. So 28 years old living with a life with depression, autism, and borderline personality disorder. And she said, in a quote, I will be going on the couch in the living room, which I said earlier. And then she said, I will always, I I was always very clear that if it doesn't get better, I can't do this anymore. And she told the media saying that the procedure will take place in her home and she will not have any music. I don't know what the point of the music comment is, but maybe that's something that uh, as part of this practice. So one of the other things before we get into our takes on this, um, she lives with her 40 year old boyfriend and they have two cats and the psychiatrist that she's been working with told her, and I quote, there's nothing more we can do for you. It's never going to get any better. Huh? <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> So when we talked about this before, I kind of understood the nuance of it. But now when I saw this, I was immediately thinking to myself, just that from the headline, right? Because you know how people does it on Instagram. It's like a headline and then you got to click to their bio and you got to go get the story and blah, 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 blah. It's a pain in the butt. But um, when I saw this, I was like 28 years old. Like, what is she living with? That was my first question, right? Because that's kind of what I had said initially was, well, depending on the circumstances, I could see a scenario where that makes sense. I don't think it ever makes sense at 28 years old. And then, so my first issue and ch- and hot take is that no, no matter the level of mental illness or mental health challenges, I don't believe that someone should be able to um, um, partner up with a doctor and euthanize themselves. Now, I don't have an answer for you of what those age limits should be and how people should be able to, um, you know, make this decision. But I don't think someone at 28 years old who has these challenges should be giving up more. So I don't think a. do we swear on here? I can't remember. We sure have. Okay. Okay. I don't think a fucking psychiatrist, a doctor who's supposed to 
protect their clients or any kind of mental health professional is supposed to, you know, do no harm, help their clients. If they can't treat them, they're supposed to help find somebody who can or who can try something different. And I think we have far too many experimental drugs, far too many experimental options, far too many developments in in neurology that having someone give up and wipe their life out at 28 years old with an assisted suicide program is just unacceptable. And I don't think that that is, um, that it, that is something any doctor of mental health or psychiatrist should be pushing whatsoever. And that was really frustrating for me to read that because, you know, as, as someone who, and here's the other part, I empathize, <laughs> I empathize with her because I've lived with depression for so long and there are days that, I mean, this resonated, that line resonated with me so much where she said, I got to find it again. Give me a second. I always very clear that if it doesn't get better, I can't do this anymore. Like I have said that to myself every day since I was probably six or seven years old in some way, shape or form. Sometimes I say it a hundred times a day. Sometimes I maybe say it once a day, but I think that too. So like I can empathize with that thought, but what I have to do is, is have, as I say to my therapist all the time, the audacity of hope, the audacity of hope that maybe someday it just won't be there. Or thinking back to the times that I had figured out how to live with it better. Right. And so when, when, when I would put structure in place, this is all like pre pandemic. And then again, during pandemic, but like, what are the things that I can do to make sure that I can function at a level that doesn't make me want to like basically die every day. Right. So the fact that she feels this way is awful. I understand that feeling. I empathize with that feeling. I have had that feeling. I have that feeling all the time, but Due to the treatments that I do for my mental health, due to the things that I do for myself that I know help, I, I just can't understand how we would have a doctor like promoting that there's nothing else you can do. There's always more to do. We evolve every single day. So I think that in early May, this young woman, 28 years old, is having the option to take her own life with assisted suicide from a medical physician. And it is just it just seems like we're just kind of sleepwalking into this and people that are supposed to be there to support her and help her have given up on helping her which of course gives up gives into that hopelessness you feel with any kind of depression so I, I just think this is a big fail across the board I think it's a governmental fail I think it's a medical fail I think it's a failure for her doctor um, who should not be practicing any kind of mental health um, uh, medicine of any type if they're going to be pushing, um, you know, a narrative that there's no hope because there's always hope. And even when it doesn't feel like there's hope, you have to have the audacity of hope. Yeah. W was that a direct quote from, from the doctor or was that her like? So it says it was her uh, reiterating. Let me read it exactly. I'll read the whole thing. I just skipped to that part. Tara Beek, who lives with her 40-year-old boyfriend and their two cats, told the media company that the psychiatrist, that a psychiatrist previously told her that there's nothing more we can do for you. It's never going to get any better. So that's mm. her set, hearsay. Mm. Um, I would love to see this <laughs> news story of, hey, I never said that. And maybe this is part of the illness. And maybe there was a miscon miscommunication or something. But mm -hmm. uh, even if there was a miscommunication of something this drastic, you would think that that doctor would have the wherewithal to, to be like, Hey, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or can let me find you someone else just to try. Cause there's yeah. always something else. There's always something new. Yeah. I'm curious what, what they have tried. Like, have they even like, have they tried At 28? Get, have, have you tried tr getting a little older, getting a little more mature? Like, <laughs> well, like I know so many things. Your brain's not even fully developed till 25 years old. Yeah. Like, so, so for three years, you've had a fully developed brain and your doctor's like, nope, that's good well, as it gets. Right. And if you look, look at what she suffers with, depression, which can hinder your cognitive function, right? Um, borderline personality disorder, which can literally be... It can I be mean, treated and it like, can be treated, but, but the cause of it can literally like be, it's like from your childhood. Yeah. Right. So that's it's the a thing developmental thing. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a developmental thing. It's just, 
to me, it is, this is ludicrous. I can't, like, I'm so upset about this. Yeah, it's not like, like I want to talk has, to this person. It's not like she has severe schizophrenia where it's like, it's hardwired. It's a software thing. You can, you can fix, well, quote unquote, fix personality disorders and, put, you know, have them in, um, what do we, what do you call it? Where it's like, you know, you treat it, you, you know? manage it, you yeah, treat yeah, it, you, you manage, manage it. it. I mean, autism, I, I don't know. I, okay. That's a hard wear thing, but yeah. uh, there's all types of people with autism that aren't applying to be dead. I'm just so like, I don't know. This. Yeah, it is weird. Cause like when, when I talked about the Canadian government possibly doing this, it was like, it was all ailments that were untreatable and unfixable mm-hmm. and it was like it was, it was just a matter of time kind of thing so yeah this is this is yeah this is not good <laughs> i don't i have my hot take is this is not good uh, yeah. well my my whole my main issue with it i think and now that I, I haven't talked about it out loud other than so full transparency to the audience i texted todd because i initially thought this was in canada because i was so triggered by the last by remembering the last conversation we had about this i asked to make sure he didn't have this article or this story planned to talk today usually we we don't talk about it ahead of time just to Mm -hmm. get hot takes but i'm just like what the fuck are we doing and what does this doctor do i think the problem i really have is with the doctor because i can empathize and feel and if i didn't have my you know my therapist telling me Hey, sometimes this happens and things get better. There's new research on this. Go look into this. It's like the the audacity of hope. And I just I wish that someone in her life would say it's not over. There is no guarantee you will ever get better, but there's also no guarantee that you won't. Like what's her 40-year-old boyfriend saying to her? I'd love to know what he thinks. <laughs> I mean, she wants to be yeah. cremated. I know she told her boyfriend that the procedure just came legal in the Nether- Netherlands when the termination of life on request and assisted suicide act was passed in April of 2021, taking effect in April of 2022. Um, I, I, I like what kind of boyfriend is this? I mean, I guess he lives with her. And so I can empathize with that, too. Like you live with someone and they, you know, they suffer, you suffer and you suffer for them, right? Like you feel for them, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like, what are we doing? Like, what is this guy doing? <sighs> I mean, she says a psychiatrist said that. So th- does Can that we mean get her, her some other most, ones? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that like the one you're seeing now, a most recent one, or was this one in the past? Or because I know there's good doctors and bad doctors but of course um but i, I mean, mean that, do that's no just, harm that's just validating her wanting to die <laughs> you know what i mean that's fucked up it really it's really i i mean i have nothing to do to help her but i just want to i just would love to talk to her just i don't know yeah. i know yeah. i promised happier lighter stories today but here we are maybe you <laughs> can uh but is her well, you have her name. Maybe you can reach out to her. I, don't I know. know. Maybe. I, Maybe I, I will. I, I, you know, sometimes I, sometimes it's like, it's really, we've talked about this, I think offline, but like sometimes, you know, it's really hard to take on someone who's struggling when you're not like feeling at your absolute best. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then not knowing or having to like, you know, institute boundaries and she, I, chances are I'd never even talk to her. Right. That's probably like 95% most likely outcome. But yeah. I also just, I, I think, who am I? Like you've got, you've got to talk to these doctors and, and stuff, you know, like real doctors, real mental health professionals, that psychologists. Are, are you on cameo? I am, but I don't think I've had oh. a cameo in a while. Yeah. Oh. I don't even know if I still have it on my phone. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's that's where I'm at. I'm like really upset that this is a thing. I feel everything yeah. you're feeling. Good. So I wasn't I, sure. I can't, I can't add I really, to that. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm not, I'm still kind of undecided with euthanasia for mental health reasons. But from the information you've given me on this story, this this one does not seem right. It doesn't. And I, you know what? 
you just took my unhinged rant and put it into the one sentence I should have just went with. Which, <laughs> there's something about this that doesn't feel right. And to me, what that piece is, is the piece that there are medical professionals. This isn't cancer where you're going to get so much worse. You're not going to have any quality of life. You're not going to, you're, you're not, you're going to be in physical pain, emotional pain. And we're just going to force you to stay in this bed until the moment that you, you can't any be on this earth anymore. Like mm -hmm. that's a different story or a type of, you know, schizophrenia, which by the way, maybe we'll cure that someday too. We don't know. That's why to say mm -hmm. there's nothing else we can do for you. You can say there's nothing else to do for you right now, but we have made so many advancements, especially in mental health and, and the way that understanding the way that the brain works, it's just, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. And I, I just, hmm. I feel like it's getting easier and easier for people to take their lives. And I just don't, now we're doing it as a medical service. Like what? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's the uh, new world order, man. I don't even get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not, that. Even, I'm not even sure what that is exactly. <laughs> That's a whole other well, round no, hole. Nobody, nobody is, but it's provocative. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that. what's that? Nobody knows what it is, but it's provocative. That's from a movie. I can't remember which one. Oh, it's, it's a good anyway. line. Well, like, that is a hot take. And I liked it. I liked your good. take on that hot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I yeah. don't I don't like that we have to talk about it, but well, I feel like I think what's happening to to us is we're like getting emotionally invested in some of these stories, and then I'm we're like seeking them out. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Are you in love with her? No, <laughs> no. I would uh, love for her boyfriend to be in love with her, though. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll assume nothing about them, him, but yeah. Even that Me doesn't too. feel right. <laughs> no, it, it really doesn't. Uh, well, I have a hot take here. Let's hear it. Uh, gambling addiction hotlines say volume is up and callers are younger as online sports getting or sports betting booms. So you I you have, watch football. I'm um, also very angry about this. <laughs> yeah, I'll. I'll I won't read the whole thing, but um, it's basically saying since since things like FanDuel and DraftKings have started, every state, some of them are saying their calls for um, addiction to gambling has like doubled <laughs> since like 2019. I don't know where they came from. Like even in Canada, I mean, it, it, I think it said 30 states out of the 50 have uh, legalized this. And a few provinces in Canada legalize it. It's like, I cannot watch a goddamn sports game without a celebrity Draft telling King, me to go on my phone. Game. I know. And you can do it I from your phone. It directly to your bank account. They're saying, they're saying it's or worse Venmo. than even, um, you know, vending or not vending machines, you know, the one arm bandits, whatever they call them, because you have to like actually go get money or tokens and put it in. This is like just digitally on your phone, goes right to your bank account. Uh, and these companies are saying they have, they are cutting people off and they're saying, okay, how many people have you cut off? And they're saying, well, we're not going to tell you. <laughs> so who knows if that's true or not, but uh, it just drives me nuts. It's like, I'm watching a football game and it's constantly alcohol or uh, gambling it, and it's very distracting. And the, I, I, and I said to my wife one time as we're watching, it's like, if I was ever a celebrity, I would never, ever sign up to do one of these ads. Like, it, it just seems like evil <laughs> in a way, you know, um, you know, so I, I don't like it at all. Um, I think it's too easy. We have a casino going up here in Chicago. I don't like that. I uh, think gambling, gambling taps into the dopamine brain chemical, which is the reward mm -hmm. chemical. And so it's, a, you, you probably know that the, the whole element of tying it to everyday sports and doing it from your phone and and um the people i i don't necessarily begrudge the people that promote it because i don't think although i don't know man maybe i do begrudge them i don't know i you got to make your money right but at the same time like what i wouldn't be able to promote it because i know how much impact it has on some people and i don't mm -hmm. i don't mess with 
sports gambling very often anymore. I used to do like DraftKings on on day or weekly games on the NFL. I'll do fantasy football with my friends where it's like a league, you know, a whole league and here's, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever. I'll do that kind of betting. Mm -hmm. But like even at a casino, I remember one time I lost a hundred bucks when I didn't have a hundred bucks to lose in about three minutes playing roulette. And I was like, I am not doing that. And I'll do like a, (laughs) I'll do $20 in the slot just to be fun. But yeah, it is. Uh, it is a dangerous game, and I think making yeah. it so readily accessible is scary. But I do have a. I have a friend who's a co-owner in um, a company that goes and promotes these, and I know. Oh, yeah, she's a good person. She's actually a wonderful person. But it's <laughs> I'm like sure she is. I'm sure there's like a disconnect. Some people have to do, or they just maybe don't think about it. Which is, I guess, fair. Yeah. I mean, everybody makes decisions and it's up to the person to make the betting and stuff, but it's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's like having loaded guns on the front porch or in your front yard. It's like, well, play with these guns at your own risk. (laughs) You know, it's like, do we have to have these loaded guns (laughs) where the public can just pick them up and monkey around with them? And, and the fact, the fact that the ages are getting younger and younger and younger too, uh, in the article, it does say like, there's, so it's not just anymore. It's like, I'm going to take the bills over the Packers. It's like, there's like a hundred games within each game. Who's going to get the first touchdown. Who's going to get the highest score. Who's going to kick the longest, what, you know, like, so then you can like yeah. gamble just, more and more ways. Game. Yeah. Per game. So, yeah. um, and yeah, they, uh, in the article, there's a guy that's like lost his, you know, there's people that lose their businesses, lose their relation. It's like any other addiction house. Yeah. Yeah. Houses. Uh, anyway, it's- Every day, I feel like I'm more and more in the, what the hell are we doing as a society? <laughs> it's just, I just don't even want to think about it anymore. I think we're making such stupid decisions that are just all to make money and just screw everybody else. <laughs> it's just, it, I just don't yeah. think it's even debatable anymore. And people just kind of lollygag around their life and. And I'm, I I don't think there's anything wrong with like games and gambling, but there's got to be right like regulation. Yeah, exactly. It's having the access to your bank account instantly and making it it's so addictive. Instant dopamine, that, or having like limits, and and they say you can set your own limits and stuff. Like you, but it's through some convoluted settings that you have to go through and so so you set your own settings as to how much you can gamble and how much time you can spend on it and stuff but but. then what happens and stops you from going and being like "Eh, i'm gonna do 50 dollars a day instead of 25 dollars a day yeah because i'm an ad regulated right (laughs) exactly (laughs) i did that with booze (laughs) it didn't work for a good (laughs) might work for a minute but (laughs) <laughs> exactly there we go another another one in the books <laughs> thank you for listening to our rants <laughs> my unhinged rant if you have any articles or anything you want to send us there are topics you want us to cover feel free to reach out to us and our uh, stuff's in the show notes there so until next time thanks for listening peace or, or watching this has been our mental health headline hot takes We're so glad you came. Remember, when you heal yourself, you heal the world. Be sure to like this video, leave comments, and suggest articles for future episodes. Hit subscribe to Eyes Wide Open and Bunny Hugs and Mental Health.